called a new daughter. And uh, Jenna called me today and said she's uh, incapacitated today and she asked me if I would uh, fill in for it this evening because we have an elected office to get to the air. I was Beautiful. trying to figure out how uh, to get up here. Your entrance. Hello, how are you? Absolutely. You know, how are you guys doing? Hi, Tisha. Hi, Tisha. How are you doing? Fine, thank good, you. Good, good. Was the elevator working? No? It did work. Up to the second floor? Yep, all the way up to the second floor. Thank you. <laughs> Take care of it. Well, we just uh, we just called the meeting to order. Okay. Uh, Jenna asked me to uh, sit in for her today because she is incapacitated yeah. or unable to attend this evening. So, uh, start with the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to your brother, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is rather somewhat disconcerting. You know, yeah, we might have to get everyone in there. Is she scaring you? Yeah. Is she scaring you? A little bit. Okay. Of course, she's said I'm scaring her. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to welcome Eric uh, to our board for this evening and take it henceforth. Uh, it's a pleasure to have people, you know, we're such a small board that it's important that we get people to attend us. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy to do that. <clears throat> Police Commission, February 15, 2023. Summary of letters received from resident regarding Officer Rosa and Officer Crowley. Subject. Wife wanted to thank the officers for the greatest gift, her husband's life, after they responded to her 911 call. Next, received from resident regarding officers Colby, Calducci, Capazali, T Ball, Rosa, Johnson, uh, Sergeant Johnson, Sergeant T Ball, uh, officers Rosa, Hall, and Papa Larson. Subject, the resident wanted to thank all the officers that have come to assist them over the years as they have had to call 911 on a few occasions. Every officer that has come to their aid has been kind and very professional. Next, received from resident regarding officers Lantier and uh, Galducci. Subject, the resident wanted to acknowledge the officers and ambulance members that responded to a motor vehicle accident they were involved in. These officers showed compassion and professionalism and they deeply appreciate all of their help. The community of Simsbury is very lucky to have such fine and caring officers. Next, received from family of a resident regarding Officer Colby. Subject, Officer Colby has responded to two calls at this resident, residence and has done a great job. His composure and empathy are very much appreciated. Last, received from resident regarding Officer Russell and Sergeant Harrington. Subject, the resident wanted to thank Officer Russell and Sergeant Harrington for their help and immediate response to the car accident they were involved in. The town of Simsbury is very fortunate to have them. End of letters. Excellent. Any comments, questions? Uh, Comment, good. fantastic. Uh, nice correspondence. Very good, very good. Uh, do you uh, keep on file, Chief, the, the names of these the residents? I know that we don't publish them here because so so we enter uh, all the information into their their personnel file um, so we have like the actual letter that was sent or a copy of that letter yes so we do have that we don't have a file in particular on uh, okay. who sent these but the letters do go directly to the members and they also in their files okay because it would you know if, if somewhere we had a procedure where they they wouldn't uh, mind their name becoming public uh, I think that might be something good that we can have, you know, in, in our in our background that we can at whatever time utilize that, so that uh, you know it can be embarrassing for some folks. They don't want to know who they are, and that's fine. I understand that. But if they don't mind, it might be a good uh, a good thing to have on file. Anyway, okay. Uh, 
next item on the agenda is reports. And since the chairperson is missing, uh, we approved the, the previous. Uh, I'm going to skip that. Ah, okay. No. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. So uh, so we'll skip. Well, there is no chairperson report, but we will uh, look at the minutes. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? They were published and uh, distributed. I have not know if you didn't get those. No. Anywhere at the meeting, so is anyone here? <laughs> no. So, uh, hearing that, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes as published. I move to approve the minutes as published. Thank you. The second. Second. Thanks so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The minutes are approved. And since we already have 5A, we will move immediately to. The chief's report because the chief has a lot of stuff here tonight. And, uh, it's just a lot of papers. Well, papers supporting our procedures and activities and, yeah. and all that good stuff. So, uh, so a short, short report for you tonight. Um, the other stuff is in the, uh, the new business section. Uh, but just starting off with personnel. Uh, we are in a very similar situation that we have been for several months now. We're still trying to fill uh, four vacancies, so two police officer vacancies, one dispatcher vacancy, and an animal control officer vacancy. We do have uh, applications for these, and we're still in the process of trying to fill those positions. Uh, partly due to those vacancies, we are experiencing many shift vacancies. Um, some of, the, some of that, uh, those vacancies on the shifts are also due in part to injury leave, sick leave, um, and we have about we have five officers who are out right now on what sort of we're considering extended leave as opposed to a day or two being sick. They're out on extended leave and that's about 13% of our uh, patrol force or our sworn force, mm -hmm. which is a considerable amount. Yeah. Uh, we still have one police officer in the academy right now. He's expected to graduate from the academy in April and he's expected to graduate the Kilo training program around September of this year. So we will not have any relief from him until about September or so. And uh, Chief, back to the uh, back to the two police officers, the one dispatch and the and the one animal control officer position. Do we have applications for each of those positions we do. that yes. we're now vetting? Yes, we do. Yeah, no, that's terrific. Uh, moving on to a, a couple of trends that we have seen, uh, not just here, but uh, within the region. There have been five reported mailboxes entered into in the last three weeks in town. Red flags are up on the mailboxes. People have taken mail out of those mailboxes and they've found checks and they have tried, they have washed the checks and changed the payee and the amount information on those checks and tried to cash those checks. So we had five of those and we have seen that uh, happening within the region. So we're trying to uh, tackle that. What we're asking people to do is if you need to put a check in the mail and it's uh, not too inconvenient for you, drop it off at the post office, probably a safer, a safer bet at this point. Um, and then also if you see any type of suspicious activity, uh, do not hesitate to call us. Uh, and Chief, are we seeing this across the state or as far as I know, check washing business. Uh, yes. Yeah, but as far as I know, mostly regionally. Yeah, with the check washing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Something that has happened for decades, you know, ups and downs. Uh, but we're, you know, we're, we're now seeing it the last month. Here. Does it deserve a press release or something to, you know, alert the, the public here? Yeah, we we were going to put something on our Facebook page, and we were waiting for some suggestions um, on what people can do. So now we have those. Um, I know uh, Avon in particular was hit in the same manner. Uh, so uh, some other trends, uh, again, the, the vehicle thefts, you know, we were doing much better toward the end of, or the third quarter of last calendar year. You said were. Were <laughs> starting to pick up again around uh, December, mid-December, late December that continued through January and the beginning of February. 
So we have had six vehicles uh, stolen since the beginning of this year. Uh, at least four of those vehicles were unlocked with the key or key fobs in the vehicles. Uh, one of these, one of the six, so not that four, uh, was a motorcycle, and it didn't have uh, the battery in it and stuff like that. So it was just uh, stolen that way. Uh, and the the sixth vehicle, we're not quite sure um, at this point about about a key. But again, a message out there to people is make sure your cars are locked, make sure your keys are not in the car, make sure your key fobs are not in the vehicle. And if it's an older style key fob, uh, not so close to your vehicle because they can be, uh, the vehicles can be turned on with some of the like, first generation models of key fobs uh, if they're close by. Uh, and then again, same thing, like just call the police if you have any type of uh, suspicious activity, somebody entering your driveway, entering your yard, uh, things like that. Um, and then one last uh, area is some recent uh, residential burglaries in the area, not in our town, but in the area. And um, so again, we're just looking for the residential burglaries. We're just looking for people to uh, keep an eye out for your homes, keep an eye out for your neighbor's homes, you see some suspicious activity, somebody go to the front door, maybe not so suspicious, but after they don't receive a response, the front door, and then they move to the back of the house, you know, give us a call. Uh, we'll, we will investigate that. And that is all that I have to report. Any questions? Uh, any any positive trends that you would want, want to report? Uh, and, and I'm not I'm only being half facetious there. Uh, sure. That like uh, maybe you could talk about the situation with the dog and if we're meeting success there, or uh, maybe uh, school involvement, uh, anything of that nature. Yeah. So the uh, the dog in particular has been used for a variety of uh, of things. The dog has been. Uh, at the school, the dog has been at the library, the dog has been out and doing different things, and has also helped out in uh, some tragic situations too, uh, where we have been able to go and uh, help sort of comfort a team after they lost a, a member of their, their uh, first responder team in another jurisdiction. Great. Uh, we've been asked to help out uh, several different times at UConn where they bring in a bunch of dogs to help out you know, different different times. Um, so that has been going has been going well. Great. Any uh, any traffic trends or uh, any, um, anything of that nature? I, I would say that the traffic trends are remaining about the same, which is um, I would generalize as fairly non-compliant. You know, there are, there are some concerns. We are trying to get the cruisers out there and, and <coughs> visible. Uh, in particular, we're seeing speeding. We're seeing uh, passing of cars, people not stopping at stop signs, rolling through the stop signs. Um, I think that, um, you know, we should have kind of a fleet of people to get back to, to aggressive. Yeah. get back to maybe where we were about five years ago with a little bit more uh, compliance without us having to be everywhere because it's really difficult to do that. You know, there are, there are days where we're just we're called to be everywhere at the same time for traffic enforcement issues, and we just don't have the ability to do that. We have been dealing with some traffic light issues that we're working with the Department of Transportation on, and you know, getting those corrected. But they seem to sort of falter on their own at times. Uh, the system itself. Um, otherwise, that's uh, that's about it. Okay. Are, are arrests up or, or warrants uh, or tickets uh, distribution uh, higher than uh, in the past because we had nobody on traffic? Uh, in, uh, we had nobody assigned to traffic right. for a couple of years, but it is one of the major responsibilities of every officer who was out there. I understand. Yeah. But I thought once we returned to somebody who was a traffic officer, maybe we'd have some more activity. Yes. Because it is ridiculous. I mean, I, yeah. you know. Um, I try to get as close as possible to the speed limit, and I get passed regularly. Yeah. Uh, not not crawling past me. <laughs> you know, gone. 
I can I can tell you that the, the traffic officer that has been out there, uh, the number of traffic stops that he has had in that assignment far exceeds the number of traffic stops that he had when he was in a patrol function. Mm -hmm. So he is out there and he's very active. Uh, so for instance, the other day, uh, there was no there was no time on an entire shift to do any traffic on the evening shift because they were they were quite busy. It involved in traffic related things as well. We had two accidents that took up a considerable amount of time on Route 10 uh, by Stratton Brook Road and then on Bushy Hill. And the officers were tied up for a significant amount of time and there was nobody else to go out and uh, there'd be traffic compliance indication and enforcement mm -hmm. elsewhere in town. Uh, I know in the budget that uh, you know we're 50 percent through the fiscal year and we're 60 percent through our budget for the police department. You know, how are we gonna how are we gonna get through the uh, rest of the year? Uh, for the for the grand total budget, the police, the police budget. Yeah, the 60 percent down below. Yeah. yeah. So again, it depends on the category you look at. Um, it doesn't go evenly throughout the year like mm -hmm. the full-time salary does <clears throat> you know other ones are uh, like the encumbrances for gasoline site so if you take a look at the gasoline it shows that we've used a hundred percent can't go anymore yeah we didn't we didn't actually use a hundred percent because of the way that the, the billing and the requisition happens how we how we pay that bill they decided to encumber uh, all of that money so it's, it shows that it's been used now but it actually hasn't as a finance people, yeah, yeah. Uh, but where we're going to go over uh, is in all likelihood in the overtime again. Yeah, I see where I see the overtime training we're eighty three percent, and uh, yeah, just OT we're probably OT yeah at seventy five percent. So yeah, seven fourteen. Yeah. I assume that the town manager's office has been informed of. Of that, that we are going to be over. Yes. So, so last year we ended up last fiscal year we ended up with uh, three hundred thirteen thousand in overtime, uh, and it doesn't look like we're going to uh, quite be in that same spot. But by the way, by the way, it's been going uh, the last few few weeks. Maybe we will be. Yeah, I would think with your last year it looked like on average we probably had three officers that were uh, yes. that were on extended leave and yes. now you were at five right now yes. with uh, more hiring to be done. So the strain on the force is probably yeah. uh, a little bit a little bit greater than last year. Yeah. Yep. The first the first part of the year was not was not uh, not as bad. Like it, it was you know, we had I think we had a chance to sort of come in <laughs> on that on that budget line. Yeah. Um, kind of a remote chance to come in on that budget line, but um, it looked it was looking pretty good. And if the trend continues now with five officers out um, and the vacancies that we do have, you know, we may we may see where we were last year. Yeah. And then just you, you kind of touched on the traffic control. Just out of curiosity. Do you have other officers covering down on the animal control type calls uh, that are coming in? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're handling all those calls. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, have you had any reports uh, on the right sizing study where that where that sits, or we could, that's still just drifting out there somewhere? It, it, it's still pending. Yeah, we, we should see a uh, uh, preliminary report in the next couple of weeks. And Eric, just to catch up here, that we've got a third party doing a study on our, on our manpower. But we're waiting to see how that staffing. Yeah, on the staffing. Thank you. We'll, uh, we're waiting to see that report come in to leverage that to, to justify this, uh, funding for more more billets. No overall look at um, all staffing, all, all the divisions. So of course that would have been after the budgets are already set. For the yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating on seeing something by the end of next week in a draft form. I'm not sure if that draft form will do us 
do us any good at that point because it's just sort of a potential snapshot. Um, but we'll see what that looks like, and then and then uh, they're coming into you, or is that coming somewhere else in the organization? It's coming in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, budgeting. Nothing more dramatic than what we've seen in the past few years, right? Mostly in staffing and manpower over time. Uh, okay. All right. What else do you have? I, I don't know. I would say as dramatic because we've got summertime potential retirees coming up as well, right? We do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have the. Oh, yeah. We potentially lose several more officers in July, and we're already playing catch up ball. So, we do. We do. And, uh, you know, one of the predominant conversations uh, when we, we go to regional meetings is the inability to staff the department right now. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult. We were, we were somewhat, uh, felt somewhat isolated from that, you know, two years ago or so. And, it's definitely uh, affecting us now. How many retirements are coming up? So we have uh, three during the first two or three months of the fiscal year that are eligible. So, and then we have uh, two in March of 2024. And then we have another one, I believe, in July of 25. So, so we have five to six who will meet that full eligible retirement date. But we also have officers here who uh, you know, may decide to retire at any point without 25 years, uh, who have you know, more time, uh, and sorry, who have uh, you know, uh, either in their second career, you know, they've been here for 20 years and they're over age 53. So every once in a while, there's discussion about that. So we have, we have a couple of those too. Well. Yeah, and not not to beat a dead horse, but our from the time we say, we, hey, okay, we need a new officer, uh, it's okay. it's taking us months to hire, and then at least six months on average to, uh, as we saw from our one officer at the academy. Right. Uh, I mean, that's a brand new officer, but right. but nonetheless, it, it's a good six to nine month lead time to get them to be a full up round. It is so. So we were authorized for two more officers July 1 of last year, and we were fortunate enough to have an internal candidate uh, move over from the dispatcher team. And so that hire happened in September. Um, and even that, it took three months to go through that process. And we're still trying to fill that second spot right now, and we're, we're in February, and we are not, we're not there yet. Have you um, explored going to college fears? So we've done that. That's sort of been like a, a traditional route, and we have not really had a whole lot of luck with that. They, they're not that common. Sometimes there are like public safety specific ones. Mm -hmm. um, we missed one last year that we were trying to go to. I don't know if they were if they're going to it this year or not. Um, but it hasn't been that successful for us. I, I personally remember going to those um, as a young officer here recruiting. <coughs> and never being really much of a success for us. Right now, there's such a big pool. Like all the agencies are hiring; uh, they're all in the same boat, and they're hiring eight, ten, twelve people at a time. And there's only there's. I mean, go to the colleges. When, it, when I was teaching there, I mean, the pool of college uh, students studying studying criminal justice or studying just in general is dwindling that are trying to get into the field. So if you have a reduced amount of uh, people, of students in the field, a greater competition of people trying to, you know, get their attention and, you know, and trying to get them to apply with them. And, and uh, so it's, it's challenging to, you know, to try and find people that want to get into the field, to be honest. We're seeing the CSI effect where they go to, they go to college for criminal right. justice, thinking they're going to, you know, Forensic lab mm -hmm. guru. They don't. They want to skip the patrol and the investigation. Right? Part of it just go right into the CSA part of it. Yeah. Just, it's a, once they feel like they have to wear a uniform, you know, 
police officer. Or well, they don't even want to be a police officer. They just want to be the city. Right. And I've had students where I'm like, you know that that, that doesn't really exist, really. <laughs> right. and other than, you know, maybe LA or, right. uh, you know, Jack be a police officer. And right. like, well, I don't really want to be, I just want to be a, you know, investigator. I just want to do yeah. this. I said, well, that's good luck. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they'll go to some of these, you know, like UNH or some of these colleges that, you know, have these uh, forensics majors and they don't necessarily have a good understanding about what the job market is. Because we have the added uh, difficulty here, I suppose it's, uh, we're still a growing community, and uh, so budget budgetary grabs take place all over the place, and, and uh, public safety is a priority concern of, of the selectmen center, but uh, so is education. Well, we just approved what twenty million dollars for school uh, renovation addition or is it 70 million i forget but it would get going up uh but you know the demands on, on the dollars for other things has been huge and uh so we, we suffer from that as well and hopefully this year it will not be as bad as it has been when i'm referring to you know overtime being you know we're still way over yeah uh, and uh it's just it's just continuing so it's a hard to uh, it's a hard thing to sell. So the more uh, uh, public uh, understands the uh, information, the better off will, will be. Uh, because it certainly is the, the number one concern of, of this commission. Uh, okay, is there anything uh, further you want to bring up uh, about the just general uh, activities, or do you want to help us out with the sure. of, uh, There's of, nothing else that I that I want to bring up, but we could, uh, we could move on to those other well, things you don't want to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about whatever you'd like. <laughs> okay. uh, let's get into the, the policy. Okay. All right. So uh, before you is uh, one document with a draft marking on it, and the other one is our current uh, general order on body-worn cameras and dash cameras. And as you recall, when when the order when the state policy came out on these, um, besides the first paragraph there that you know that we sort of collectively put together, it mirrors the state the state policy. Uh, Post came out with a change, uh, and so that's been provided in the draft and it's highlighted for you uh, what those changes are. I don't think that in general those changes. Um, we'll see, you know, we'll have much impact on what we do here, except for um, the first section that was changed. Otherwise, it deals with um, federal agencies and working with federal agencies. So, what I'm looking now, at. When you say the first section, which you're talking about. I'm sorry, the, the first highlighted change. Paragraph three? Yeah, paragraph three talk. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So, it's actually four that deals with, okay. with, with us, three deals with uh, federal agencies. So paragraph four deals with us. It just, it, I think it gives a better clarification on non-uniform assignments for detectives and, and their their need to wear body cameras. Yeah. Well. I think the the changes that they made were straightforward, and you know, I suggest that uh, that we adopt those changes. Uh, I see the storage and retention piece. Do we have an issue at all with the amount of storage and being able to house housing? No, so no, we do not. So uh, we use uh, Axon, and Axon stores that. Uh, we set the retention time on that. We're not charged by I, our our service with them is not based on the amount of time that we. It's based on uh, it's based on the uh, amount of users, right? It's based on the amount of users, and then there's also some uh, some other things like we import video that was not taken from the the uh, body camera or the dash camera. That's sort of at an a la carte right now. There's a certain amount that we can put in there that way, and then we'll be charged more afterwards. But it's not based on time and retention. It's not based on uh, how much storage space that uh, you know, the time. Okay, so. There, there are no concerns about about that change. And overall, just sorry to branch off here, but our, our the functionality of our cameras are, has been 
uh, has been more than adequate, correct? It has been. Uh, what we are finding that is extremely time consuming, though, is uh, releasing those videos with you know, the redactions. So if we have to redact something, um, going through that process of reviewing it and either redacting an audio section or, or a video section or blurring out uh, somebody's face or whatever it may be is just really time consuming. Hours. Physically, yeah. who does that for us? I'm sorry. I just want to ask the same question. Yeah. Uh, our lieutenant uh, for professional standards does. Okay. Yeah. Kind of Matt Christian. And actually, I wasn't even after a name. I was more after that's done in house. It's done in house. Yeah. yeah. But so, how long could it take for him to do one? It's, it could be hours and hours. I don't know if you shared with you, like one of the last DWIs um, that we had to release, and we have to go through it and, and look at it to make sure that there isn't anything that needs to be redacted. Uh, by statute, and uh, it's ours. Depends on obviously the length of the recording, things like that. I mean, the different aspects that go into it, as far as how long it's going to take him to. Yeah, you know, some of these you know, recordings have you know multiple cameras, multiple you know m multiple officers, multiple cameras. You have the body camera, the dash camera. Uh, say multiple officers, and, and if it's in an extended period of time that they're on the call. They have to sit and physically watch. You know, it's a one one minute to one minute, you know, endeavor to watch it and then and then go back and redact it. Yeah, sort so of, so uh, we aren't we aren't missing a, a technology, an app, or anything of that nature to assist no. in the in the redaction issue. No, it's, it's just a time consuming process. Right. So the vendor that we chose, uh, Axon, comes with that that software, that redaction software in there, and just to give a real clear. Example is, you know, if there's four hours of recording, and somebody discloses a medical diagnosis or condition or something like that, we want to make sure that we hear that to then just redact that portion out to protect that person's person's privacy. So, four-hour video, you're at, at least four hours into that. And it's not just our agency; like you, you, you asked if it was. Uh, um, you know, if there's any other software, and everybody's in the same boat, you know, trying to do, you know, kind of come up with, you know, trying to figure this out and deal with it. It's just, you know, there is no, you know, quick, easy fix, basically, to kind of speed through it. And, and uh, it's just the way it is. Have you seen anything? A large surge of <clears throat> freedom of information requests requesting the body cam. So, so we had uh, dash cameras. I think since about 2001, and uh, since we went over to uh, body-worn cameras in uh, 21, we've had a, a big increase in the requests. So every every insurance company now, I mean, it's almost like with every accident, they're requesting. That's like just their standard protocol now yeah, for every accident. I mean, so the rest. And yeah, I mean, but specifically, you know, the, you know, the amount of accidents and the insurance companies. You know, just just that alone, you know, the uh, the hours of, of, uh, that it goes. For. Is there anybody internally that can help the lieutenant, no. or does it all fall on his shoulders? Well, so uh, <clears throat> staffing all around is, is really is really slim. So if we look to a records clerk for that, uh, and they do have you know, the expertise in knowing what can and can't be released. Um, we have a full-time record supervisor, we have a full-time uh, records clerk, and then we have a part-time police clerk. So um, they're already busy enough with the work that they're doing now. So maybe in the future we're looking for somebody to help, help the lieutenant yeah. out strictly for the FOIA requests and the video. Yeah. And that, that is addressed in the uh, work force oh. site. So right now, do we have uh, video requests lined up in a queue right now? Like, hey, we're, we're behind 10 jobs or that sort of thing? Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, 
we know when he has worked on a significantly long case because yeah, we'll he's given for a break yeah. and the guys will be bloodshot <laughs> over they're going to yeah. see a break from, shot. from staring at this um i don't know if there's a long he's, cue for yeah that. he's kept pretty he's pretty close to on top you know if not not yeah. yet backlogged i think he's he's in a good place i, I believe that i even heard him you know have any big backlogs of times yeah. but uh but, but, uh, but again, I, same thing away from other duties they've yeah. been doing. And yeah, just, I, could, yeah. I could see if it's, a, you know, the redactions largely are for compliant, legal compliance. Yeah. I could see, you know, where hey, we really actually need an administrative assistant or uh, someone who that's their full-time job is to, to scrub video. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Anything else that you want to... No, sir. Not just about. Ah. And, and so the draft is will become finalized at, at what point? Uh, as early as tomorrow morning. All right. Yeah, as long as you uh, approve it. It's only in draft form because you have to approve it. Right? Yeah. That's it. Okay. Okay. Do you have any further questions about the draft? Or? No, but looks out to me. Would you like to make a motion that we approve? I make a motion that we approve the draft of General Order 41 3. Second. Do you have a second? Second. Any further discussion on it? All those in favor of approving it? The aye. city clap by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It's approved tonight. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, we've touched on the, uh, the monthly report and the uh, the budget report is there any further activity you want to get into on that uh it is a critical time of course with the board of finance uh, uh waiting for the town manager's uh, document to come forth uh nobody knows what it's going to say uh but it's not going to be it's not going to be easy for any of us and uh, we need to be prepared for that because that could affect a lot of things and the more the more time that's put into reviewing tapes and records and putting it into alphabetical and numerical order, I mean, it's just amazing the amount of record keeping that now has to take place uh, that the public is just not aware of. Uh, but I don't know, probably 30% of your forces spent doing that sort of thing, or maybe more. I don't know, but it's a, it's a tremendous uh, load of work. And so in the next uh, 30 to 45 days, we'll know <laughs> with the proposed budget for the next fiscal year is it what we're faced with. But in the meantime, the beat goes on. Uh, if there's no further old business, we uh, we'll get to the new business of electing our commission uh, officers for the next fiscal year. Uh, as, as I think we all know, you, you probably don't, maybe you do, but uh, the mega loop is, is commissioned by a charter uh, is split between uh, Democratic Party, Republican Party, and unaffiliated voters. And uh, we traditionally, by custom, uh, rotate the, the officer shift, if you will, uh, the chair, the chairperson between those on, on an annual basis, which by also by custom we do extend for a two year period. And uh, Jenna Caulfield, our present chairperson, is an unaffiliated voter and fulfills that charter requirement. Uh, she is now completing her second year, but we, uh, uh, the next person who by tenure would have been entitled to move forward, uh, resigned as of the year end, and you uh, replace that person. Okay. Uh, but that, that adjusts everything off uh, of my event. So I think uh, what I'd like to propose is that we. Uh, Bend our custom a little bit, and we uh, re-elect Jenna for another one-year one period uh, as chair, and uh, then, then the next uh, person by custom will be entitled to move into that position. Is on my right, and, and you are now the clerk, right? Uh, Correct. And so uh, we keep those positions in place for a year, and then we'll visit revisit next January where we stand. Uh, and I think that's probably acceptable to all. It certainly is to me because I'm I want to do this, you know, <laughs> forever. Uh, Joe knows that. Uh, so uh, I'd like to have a motion to uh, uh, nominate or elect uh, 
Jenna Caulfield as the chair for another year, and Travis Schweizer as our clerk for another year. Would you like to make that motion? I make the motion to elect or keep Jenna as the current chairperson, mm -hmm. um, and for Travis to be the clerk of the police commission. Excellent, and I will second that. Uh, and uh, if there's any further nominations, hearing that nominations are closed. All in favor of the uh, two nominations that have been put forward, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Done deal. All right. Thank you. I have the chance.